A couple videos ago, I showed you how to build a cheap inverter system that you can use for emergencies. And today I'm going to show you a much more robust and permanent solution. And I'm going to be building that with one of Roy Powell's golf cart lithium batteries. I would suggest going to your golf cart supply store to get your battery. Otherwise, it will show up like mine did on a pallet inside of a crate. The combined weight of everything is probably around 150 pounds. So you may want a forklift if you're going to try to buy one of these online. Let's open up the crate. This is a 38.4 volt lithium battery. And the battery itself weighs about 75 pounds. One person can pick it up, but because of its size, it's a little awkward. It's pretty amazing how much power you can get in such a small size now. This particular battery has about 4 kilowatt hours of power. And these golf cart lithium batteries are available in 36, 48, and 72 volt. The reason I picked this particular battery is this has the same capacity as the highest capacity 48 volt battery that they have. And 36 volt inverters are much cheaper than 48 volt inverters. So I get the same amount of energy storage for a cheaper cost. Let's look at the battery itself. This is really nice all metal enclosure. There is a gasket along this top seal to seal out water. If you have a golf cart that is filled with a bunch of lead acid batteries, all you need is just this one battery to replace all those lead acid batteries. And not only is this a smaller size than all those lead acid batteries, but this will last longer as well. There's only connections on one side of the battery. All the rest are flat. If I turn this around, we have the battery vent that allows gases from the battery to escape. Then we have our positive and negative outputs to go to the electric motor and also where you would connect up the battery charger. We have a communications port which would be used for a battery meter. Roy Pow does offer a battery meter for this battery, but I did not get it. And then there's an on and off switch for the battery. Let's just turn that on right now. After installing the battery and hooking up the outputs to your motor and inverter, uh, you're going to need a way to charge the battery. You could use the charger that's built into your golf cart. You could have it reconfigured to charge a lithium battery, which needs a higher voltage than the lead acid batteries did. But I would suggest getting a battery charger from Roy Pow. This is the battery charger that goes along with this battery. This looks a lot like the Thunderstruck battery that I put in my electric car. It's really heavy. Seems like a very nice unit. Here on the back it says it outputs 43.5 volts at 22 amps. And the way that you would use this charger if you were going to use it with a golf cart is this would stay at home in your garage. They have a different power cord that would come with a different adapter on the end depending on what country you're in. And then on the golf cart itself you would mount these terminals to the battery which would charge them up. And then you would have this plug here that you could access either on a bulkhead or just flip your seat up so that you could gain access to this. And this is a really nice quick connect to the charger. Just line them up, push it together, and it locks. Then just give it a slight turn and it comes apart again. So in a golf cart configuration, the charger itself would stay at home. If you have room, of course, you could mount this in there and get a little bulkhead connector for your power connector. Then all you have to do is plug an extension cord into the side of your golf cart. And for my setup, the charger and the battery are going to be mounted together. And then the power cord will be plugged into a shore power source. The inverter that I'm going to be using with this setup is from Ames Power. This is a 5,000 watt inverter. It can surge up to 10,000 watts if it needs to. On the back is the lugs that we would connect up to the battery. And then on the other side we have four AC outlets as well as the terminals that we can hardwire the power to our vehicle. Then we have an outlet for a remote and our on and off switch. I'm going to put this all together here on the table so you can easily see how this works. I have my wires on the inverter and then I need to connect the other end of those and these ends of the charger to the output of the battery. Fortunately, they didn't send me any fasteners for these. I didn't get any bolts. So I did end up finding some that fit. It would be nice to have some stainless steel ones. But I don't have a big selection of metric bolts on hand, so I'll have to go to the store and buy some. But these will get us by for now. 
Now the inverter wiring and the charger wiring are all connected to the battery. Now once I connect this connector, the battery should start charging. Well, I have the charger plugged in now. I can turn the power on the battery on and the light will come on, but it won't stay on for very long. And I thought that the light on the charger should be flashing if it's charging the battery, which it's not. The only way I can tell that that is actually outputting power is because the inverter does have power right now and it's not coming from the battery. It's coming straight from the charger. There wasn't any instructions that came with the battery. So I guess I'll just turn the inverter off and I'll let this sit for a while, see if anything changes. I think what might be going on is it's very cold in the room right now. It's probably about 50 degrees Fahrenheit and possibly the battery has some sort of thermal protection in it that is not allowing it to charge or discharge at the moment. So I may need to move this into another room and warm it up. Correction, it looks like it's only 40 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now. I've had my fan with a heater on it blowing on the battery for about an hour now. We look at the thermal camera. We can see parts of the battery on this side around 80 degrees. But if we move around to the back side, that's probably about 50 degrees back here still. Just for fun, let's see how hot it is inside that fan. 200, about 200 degrees in there. So I'm not sure if this is why the battery is still not working properly because it's too cold. So I think I'm going to have to move it into another room overnight, let it warm up, and then see if it works properly after that. I let the battery sit overnight in a more heated area of the shop. So the temperature now looks like it's almost 60 degrees on the battery. If I hold down the power button and turn it on, it goes green for a little bit, but then it turns itself off. So I think this is a defective unit. If I plug the charger in, there's still no change. It does not charge the battery. Let's disconnect the post, put a voltmeter on it, and just see what's going on. So this is interesting. I hooked the voltmeter up, and it's showing that it's outputting 12 volts right now. The power's off. Let's turn the power on, see what happens. No change. Let's hold it down. There we go. We did see it jump up to 30 some for just a slight second, but then it turned itself back off again. There wasn't any instructions that came with this battery. And the instructions I looked up online, there wasn't any real troubleshooting guides, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Just saw it turn off. Let's try that again. Try to watch the voltage. Yeah, it jumped up to 38 volts there for a second. But apparently when it's off, it's still supplying about 12.7 volts, which is interesting. Light's still on, but it's only outputting 12 volts still. Light went off again. No change down here. So I think I have a defective unit. I've been on the phone with tech support from Roy Pow, and they've been really helpful. They've gotten right back to me and they sent me this device here. It's got a little white box. On the other end, we can connect it to the battery and then it has a USB on the other side. I needed a, an adapter to adapt from USB-C to USB-A to use this with my computer. But let's get this connected and then we can actually log into the battery we can see all of its parameters and we can also bring up the history and see all the logs. Let's do that now. The lights have come on on our device. We have a red one and that green one is flashing. It also turned the light on the battery on. Now, if we want to communicate with the battery, we need to come up to communications and pick RS-485. Let's hit the switch, make sure it's on. Still says BMS is not connected. Oh, there it goes. So our state of charge is 14%. 
we have a fault over here, voltage failure, temperature failure. So I don't know if that means that the sensor is broken or the sensors become disconnected or what the deal with that is. Um, but it looks like I was on the right track that this is a problem where it's shutting down because it thinks that the temperature is not correct. I think that it is warm enough in here for this battery, but I think that the problem is a sensor problem within the battery. One strange thing, if we look at these cell voltages, each one is only just a fraction of a volt, 0 0.045 volts. All of them are reading the same. That is really, really low for a lithium battery. And that doesn't make sense if the state of charge is 14%. I think this would be much higher values. So maybe there's more wrong with the battery than just a faulty temperature sensor. We go under project and history. We can select read and this will get all of the logs out of the battery. It'll take a few minutes. We can see the transmission light is working. It's transferring the data from the battery to the computer. Let's make this bigger. So the first time that the battery was turned on was January 4th of 2023. And I think that's the first time that I've turned it on. They must clear the history or they don't even power these batteries on before they ship. Not sure. I would imagine that they would have turned it on and tested it before they shipped it out. Um, and then probably cleared the history so that they know what has happened when a customer has had it. And you can see that the state of charge when I got the battery was at 22%. And a bunch of times trying to figure this out on January 4th. And then it looks like a couple days recently I've turned it on. I tried again on the 5th. And then I haven't tried this battery since uh, January 20th was the next time that I tried to power it on. That's probably when I first started dealing with tech support. So I'll get these logs and all these screenshots sent over to their engineers and we'll see what they say. I sent all the data into RoyPal and they determined that the battery management system circuit board has gone bad. And look at this, they actually sent me one. And I'm now going to take the battery apart and replace the board with this new one. It's pretty cool that they have support like that, that they will send you a part to fix your product. So far, I've had uh, actually really good luck with the support on this battery. Let's get into this thing. First thing I'm going to do is remove all these screws that hold the top cover on. Now I'm going to cut these cable ties off. Now I'm going to disconnect the positive power. And these connectors, which I assume are detecting the cell voltage of the cells in the battery. Now I can disconnect the power from the batteries. And there's four bolts holding each battery in. Now I can take the batteries out. We're left with the BMS over here. It's just, just a matter of disconnecting all the wires, mounting our new BMS in there. 
and then putting it back together. Ooh, look at this. This connector here was disconnected. I wonder if that's what the problem was. I think this had come loose and got disconnected. So, should I put it back together, plug this in, and see if it works? Or should I replace the board first? After zooming in and looking at the video, I can see that that connector was wiggling around the whole time, so I know it was disconnected before I had taken it apart. So I'm going to leave the new board out and put it back together and see if it works. I'm gonna make sure that all the connectors are secure before I put everything back together. Everything else looks good. I'm going to quickly connect everything back up before I secure everything down, just in case I have to take it apart again. I think everything is reconnected. Hit the power button. Let's see if it's actually outputting voltage this time. Thirty nine volts. So that's good. I think that fixed it. I can secure everything back in. Now I just need to get some zip ties and tie everything up and it should be good. There's a bunch of cable ties on the side here and that's what I am securing these down to. I was a little worried about these sticking up but as you can see this part sticks up further so there's no harm in those sticking up like that. Let's try this out again. Let's try the charger first because last time when I connected the charger, the fan never spun up. It didn't do anything. So if the battery is working now, hopefully the charger will start to charge it. It turned the battery on, which it did before. And there it goes. Finally, it's charging my battery. Let's disconnect the charger. Battery is still on. Let's try the inverter now. So that's that we have voltage this time. The inverter should be on. Let's find something to plug in and test this out. This fan is a good device to use because it takes a lot of power. Plug this in. Turn just the fan on, set that to high. Looks like we're hardly using any of the power that this inverter can supply. Let's turn the heater on now. There we go, we saw the voltage drop slightly, but still no problems powering this fan with the heater. In the other inverter setups that I've shown, this fan takes about as much power as the inverters can usually supply but it's running off of this battery, no problem. This is an extremely powerful battery, and for a day trip or a small weekend trip, this would be a perfect setup. Everything that you see here on the table can easily be transferred into a motorhome, a boat, a trailer, a cabin, wherever you wanna have power. This is a very powerful battery bank that will power devices for quite a long time. Then when you want to charge it back up, just plug the charger into a generator or another power source. It will recharge the battery and you'll be ready to go again. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.